Okay, this is the second video in to show you how to make windows in uh, using AutoCAD in 3D. Uh, we previously made a solid window, and what we're going to do this time is make a 3D faced version of the same one. And the reason for that is that this window is not very editable. You know, if I try and stretch this to make it bigger, it's a complete disaster. Nothing behaves. You you really kind of fix with those sizes unless you do some pretty contrived editing that involves kind of slicing and dicing and rejoining objects together. So if this was stretchable, you know, in this kind of manner, so I actually need to explode that first. Whereas this is the kind of freedom we want with the window. We want to be able to stretch and pull and have lots of different sizes. But there's initially more work in creating the window. So with this window, we kind of started with the big object first, the window surround. With the 3D faced one, I'm actually going to start with the smaller object first. Uh, just because there's less kind of clutter then, we can create things and put them out of the way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just look at this face on initially and create some 3D faces. So I'm just going to look straight at the window. Okay, I'm going to extend this line. Extend it on this side as well. Okay, because as you can see, these aren't even, these aren't exactly the same size. Um, we could just create one and then stretch it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's be more methodical with our time. Let's just create the top window and then copy it to make the base, the lower casement as well. So I'm going to go straight to the layer I need to use for these, for this, so that I don't have to change them onto different layers later. So 3D faces. So with the 3D face, you pick one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, let's isolate just that layer so we don't have to kind of work with the other ones. Okay, so I want to isolate this layer. Okay, and I'm going to copy that backwards 50 millimeters. Okay. Now, for this type of window, we don't need a surface on the outside of this box, but we do need surfaces on the inside. Okay, the outside's not going to be visible, so pointless surfacing where you can't see it. So I'm doing continuous 3D faces here. So once you pick your first points 1 and 2, you only need to pick points 3 and 4 for the next one. Okay, so let's have a look at that. It should look like a frame, but open around the outside. Okay, now let's copy that before we disturb it. Okay, I'm gonna, just going to copy it by a set distance so I know how far to put it back. Okay, I'm going to copy it to the side and 1500 looks about right. Okay, and then we'll have a look We'll bring the layers back on so we can see what's happening and then do plan and enter twice. We just got away with that distance wise. So this one wants to be from here to here. So let's just pull out a couple of polylines to help us decide where it's going to go. Okay, and I'm just going to move it. So, but I need to know how far to move, so it's from here down to here. Use polylines a lot for this kind of operation. They're fantastic for helping you move things by accurate distances. So these two need to overlap. Okay, but this needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm using the polyline again to ascertain the distance. So I'm not typing in any distances. Just let let your model generate from the 3D, from the 3D, from the 2D drawing. So all that stuff's done it work. Okay, this casement goes behind this one. 
okay, by its own depth. Okay, so we could try and move that in the 3D view. Let's go to 2D wireframe and move. Do a couple of selections here. Okay, 12 in total, that's correct. Okay, we're moving it by its own depth through from endpoint to endpoint. Now, the top surface here would be visible and the bottom surface here would be visible. So let's put a, a lid just on this one and copy that to be the underside of this one. Okay, if I shade it now. Okay, so that would be visible on the inside of the building and that surface is visible on the outside of the building. Okay, we can put this into position now. So let's take all these. It should be 13 now. That's correct. Okay, and it might be easier to view this from the inside. We're going from... Oh, we just need to move it 1500, don't we? Because we, we moved it sideways. So if we slide it back in 1500, it'll be in the right position. Okay, now these need to go backwards, but we need to determine that distance, and that's where our section comes in. So if we go to the right left UCS, I'm going to mark the position where this should be. Okay, it needs to be in line with this point. Okay, so let's just draw a little line. Okay. Isolate the layer again. And we can move those back. So compared to solid modeling, you know, that's a lot more work. Okay, should be... You know, we'll do a little difference in height there. Let's just bring the 2D stuff back on. Let's unisolate for a second. I know, yeah, we're, this is 25 millimeters back. So let's do a little bit more, a little bit more 2D there. We just need to, so that's the end of that line that we're working to. Okay, so let's isolate again. Okay, from there to there. And while we've got this window on its own, we could put the glass into it. And the glass is going to be the same size as it is on the other window, so I'm actually just going to steal that. Uh, you've seen how that was created, that was a 3D face, so we can use those again. So let's just copy them. Okay, from the corner to the corner. So they're fitting exactly, because it's the same size of window. Okay, so let's unisolate, so we can see all the other stuff. And we'll move on to the next object in the way. So this is the subcell and the subframe. So I'll make that my current layer. And I'm going to switch off the pale green there. Actually, I think we'll freeze it just so it, we get rid of it permanently for now. And the glass can go as well. Okay, let's make things a little bit easier to understand. Let's get rid of some of this 2D stuff now. We've dealt with that poor part of the window. Okay, so we're now looking at this component, the subcell and the frame around it. Okay, let's do this. Let's do the cell first. Okay, if we copy that. Okay, from one end of this line to the other, we can then 3D face that object. Okay, the back face, we don't need to do a bottom face because it's not going to be seen. So you only need to do the surfaces that are going to be visible. And this makes them more lightweight in, in geometry terms as well. Now, I said we don't need to do the underside, but you do, you can 
see a bit of this so I think we may as well put the underside on okay so that's the subcell and then we can look at the front of this now to draw the shape around that and I've got a lot of 2D stuff here so I'm actually going to dispose with some of this so that I don't pick up too many wrong lines um, we don't really need to refer to any of that stuff at the top now okay the window casements have been done they can be deleted as well okay uh, I think probably we're good to go with these as well okay that's going to make things a bit easier to see so back to our rear UCS the back one and plan okay and very slender 3D faces now going around this green shape okay so it's 3F okay this one's a bit tricky so we don't want to accidentally pick one of these points the 3D face would jump backwards so I'm just going to do this one in 3D Okay, keep it going. So that's three, four, down the way here, three, four. Okay, let's move those three surfaces, okay, from the end point to the back of the window. Okay, this shape's done its job. We don't need to see that. Now we'll copy these towards us by 150 millimeters. Okay, that's our thickness of this, but we can use the drawing because it goes from here to here. Okay, okay, copy from there to there. And now we 3D face the bit that we would see. So we would see this surface and we would see this surface if we were looking the other way. So 3D face, one, two, three, four, three, four, three, four. Okay, let's just check that with a little bit of shading. Okay, so we've got a frame. That's our subframe. These lines, these 2D lines have done their job now. We don't need those. Okay, so get rid of the 2D stuff there. So how do we deal with the with the cell? This is quite a bit more tricky. Okay. First I'm going to get rid of these two yellow lines because they're just guesses when I drew the 2D. Um, okay. This shape wants to be out the way by 50 millimeters. So let's let's push it out by 50 millimeters. So that's the overhang of our of our window sill. Okay. These shapes want to be out 25 millimeters. So I'm going to copy these instead of moving them. Okay, so I'm going to copy these because I will need to know where they would have been when they if they were on against the wall. So they're going out 25 millimeters. Okay, do that for the top lines as well. So let's just copy these by the 25. So you can kind of see that that's the the the, the cement band around the window. Okay, so this polyline shape for the for the sill should trim these lines. And let's see where it happens. So we need to go to the left UCS and then trim so we're taking a bit off that a bit more off that a little bit off this one that one's jumping a lot there it doesn't look like it's happy to trim that one so is it because it's a polyline? I'm not sure so I'm just going to replace that with a copy of this one So. 
to end. Okay, so they should be in line like that. Okay. So things are going to be a little bit different with this one. We don't necessarily need to model the stuff that's hidden inside the wall. You know, this is a, a more lightweight window. We don't need all the hidden information. We need a copy of this against the woodwork here. So where would that hit? So generally we use polylines. So let's use the uh, let's make the the sill the current layer now and let's make it a bit brighter so we can see it. So I'm just going to make it orange instead. Okay, so polyline from the corner of the woodwork backwards and it should be trimmed by this. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it's chopped it somewhere along its length. Difficult to see with the shaded. So it can just about make it out there. Okay, so we'll copy this back to that end point. Okay. What we can do now is just extend this and trim off the end of the sill. So we're starting to get a 3D wireframe here to work in. Let's put some surfaces on just so you can get the feel for things. Okay. And let's put one on the front as well. Okay, we would also have the underside of the cell, which would be visible. Okay, and that if we draw a line from here, polyline from here to there. So that the 3D face is the end. If we shade it, you'll get a better idea. Okay. We want to kind of work right the way across now but we don't really have enough points or anything at this side to work with just yet. So let's let's mirror the orange material from this side. Uh, I'll need to go to the back UCS first. And I'm going to set the origin to be this corner. Mirror. Use the midpoint here. And that's the two ends of the sill. Okay, let's go to 2D wireframe so we can see through it. And we'll put a surface on the bottom, a surface on the front. Okay, these lines want to be duplicates of these ones, so let's just erase these and copy these across. Okay, we could do with a, a mirror of this one as well, so because we need to know where that point is. So let's just mirror that. Using the midpoint, and we can 3D face what's happening here now. Okay, we can go to this point, we can skip that middle line. but we need to pick up on these ones to make it um, kind of a sealed object. So let's just have a look at that in shaded. Okay, now we need to work our way around the outside and the inside. We should be able to shorten that. Similarly here, I can shorten and I can lengthen. So that's our wireframe for the outside. Okay, we'll let's do that, those thin ones around the outside. Well, actually, it might be wiser to do the inside ones where, while we can see them. So, a 3D face from here to here. We 
can't see where we're going there, but it's it's letting us go transparently through the model. Let's just check that that's in the right place. Yeah, got away with that. Okay, that could be copied across. Don't have to draw it again. The window's symmetrical. Okay, and then one for the top. Going to the corner of the green. Okay, just check. Little shades all the way along the line. Just make sure you're on the right track. Okay, looking good. Okay, let's do the front surface now, the big ones. So it's one, two, three, four, three, four, three, four, and then we'll go around the outside. So it's one, two, three, four, three, four, three, four. Any 2D information now is not needed. Uh, we haven't done the inside reveal. Okay, so let's go to that layer. And we've kind of done this numerous times now. So the inside reveal. Let's go on this side, it'd be a bit easier to see. So I'm in the back UCS, so. Oh, wrong layer. We'll use this layer, that'll be better. Rectangle. And we're going to the very outside there. Okay. Now it doesn't need to be solidified like this. Okay, we just need to copy it out the way, but we're not sure how far to take it. So let's draw a polyline. I need to change to the left UCS a polyline from this position which is the wall surface back the way by 450 okay copy the polyline the rectangle and then 3d face just around the white object okay then back up to the top and that should be it. We have to watch out with deleting here, because if we delete in this area, we pick up lots of stuff. So we'd be better to maybe make layer zero current and actually turn off layers slowly, just so we reveal the 2D stuff that we can get rid of. So everything left now is 2D rubbish. Okay, and put those layers back on. Okay, we've got our windows as well. So, generally, from the outside, they should look pretty similar. If I don't use edges, you know, they look basically the same. But this one is far more editable. So, let's put the glass back on. Okay, so if I need a wider window, it's easy, easy. If I need a, you know, a shorter window, it's no problem. I could take away the portions here, make the window thinner. It can do, you know, whatever needs done. So the, if you do have, you know, lots of small variations in the window sizes, you know, spending that extra time, it was about an extra ten minutes to create. But the editing will be, you know, super quick in comparison. Okay, I hope that's been useful and you put it into practice. Uh, you'll find a copy of these on in the descriptions if you want to use them.